Well, hey there. I thought I would do a video today while I'm skating. Um, I decided I was going to get out early this morning so that I could come out and skate. And hopefully I don't bust my butt trying to do this. <laughs> and I don't know if the wind is going to drive you crazy, but... Anyway, I thought I would do this video because um, a couple of videos back, don't remember how many, I made a mention of, you know, I might be getting ready to have this like big life change and everything and I kind of hinted at some stuff. <laughs> oh, that wind. I have a feeling the wind is going to be really loud in this. Um, so I thought I would update on that. So what I was hoping for was if, if you've watched some prior videos, I talked about Furball Farm Cat Sanctuary. And that place has literally changed my life. I'm telling you, there's just, I can't even really explain how much it's, it's changed it in a good way. And one day I, I literally was sitting and watching one of their live streams and I had this overwhelming feeling that washed over me and I had this like realization that I was meant to be there, that that was where I should go and to volunteer, that I, I really needed to be there and that this was kind of like my destiny or something like you know I've waited my whole life to find my place in this world I've waited my whole life to find something that really captured me and and wanted me to be a part of it and this place did that so after a lot of thinking and crying and all kinds of stuff I I really just decided this is what I want to do that was a huge decision, <laughs> huge. And for somebody that's like me, who's autistic, making decisions is a very difficult thing to do. I mean, even just making a decision for what I want to have for lunch is a big decision. It's hard for autistic people to make decisions about things. So this was gigantic. <laughs> this was gigantic because we're talking about making a decision to leave paradise, you know, here in southern Thailand with all the palm trees and the beach. And I'm where I'm at right now, I can literally hear the ocean because it's just right over there. Can't see it from here, but um, I can hear it. But I was ready to give that up and leave this all behind to go and volunteer full time. And when I'm talking full time, I was going to offer my services to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, my only problem was is that, you know, when I get there, I got no place to go, you know. I don't know anybody there except for the people that work at Furball Farm. You know, I don't know anybody. And, don't have family there or anything. I've never even been to Minnesota. So, you know, that was the only real main obstacle that I saw was, you know, if I go there, I'm going to have to have a place to stay. And so I did some research because I was looking into, you know, if you are a volunteer for a nonprofit organization, you know, what's involved in that, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, are places like that uh, able to allow their volunteers to live on site? You know, how does that affect their tax exempt status, things like that? So I looked into it and I saw that, I mean, I was literally the perfect candidate to go and live on site there. And it would not, you know, have any effect on their tax exempt status. So, after looking into these things and trying to look into a lot of stuff, I decided that for me, because I'm not great at trying to express myself um, 
like in an email, it's easier for me to do this, to talk on a video, because I can say what I'm trying to say as best as I can. I'm not great at that either sometimes, but <laughs> I thought I'm gonna make a short video message for the owner and her sister, which are the primary people there, so that I can let them know that this is what I would like to do, that I want to come there and volunteer for them, you know, full time. It took a lot of courage <laughs> to make the video. It really did. It took a lot of courage to make that video and to put myself out there. And I wanted the video to be 100% me. You know, I wanted to just be myself in the video, not try to edit it or anything like that. It wasn't scripted. I was just 100% myself. And even Poppy, <laughs> my cat Poppy, during, right towards the end of the video, he jumped up in the sink or something, knocked something over, made this loud crashing sound and everything. But I left that all in there because I thought, this is real, you know? I'm, I just want them to see the real me my real personality and everything. So I made the video and then for a solid week, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for the opportunity to try to get that video message, which was only five minutes. I tried to make it short, which is, you know, if y'all watch me, you know, I like to talk and I can go on and on. So I, it was really a struggle for me to try to say as much as I could in a five minute span so I didn't make the video too long. Um, with the main points, and I said in the video that, you know, there's a lot of details that I would really like to discuss with you, you know, if you'd like to talk about this further. So I waited a week, I kept, I mean, I was literally up practically 24 hours a day because with the time zone difference, <laughs> um, you know, when they're up, <coughs> excuse me, when they're up, you know, that's usually my bedtime. I'm, I'm usually asleep. So I was staying up like all night long, <laughs> waiting to see if one of them would come into the Twitch stream so that I could send them a little message in the Twitch stream to say, hey, you know, I've got a message I'm trying to get to you. You know, is it okay for me to send it, whatever. Well, for a whole week, I got nowhere, no luck at all. Then finally, one of the volunteers suggested that maybe I should send them a message on their mobile number, the sanctuary's mobile number. So I did. I sent one of the people um, a message on there and I just, I basically just said, I've been trying to reach these people. I have a message I want to get to them and I was told that this might be a good way to reach them. Well, one of the people I was trying to reach actually responded like within a minute. And they were like, hey, it's me. And I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> and I said, I've, I've been trying to get this message to you. And I was wondering, you know, would, would you be willing to watch a five minute video that I made for you and your sister? Um, and so, you know, she was like, yes. And I said, well, you know, I've, I've uploaded it onto my channel. I actually uploaded it onto my ASMR channel as an unlisted video, because it'd be easier for them just to click on a link and watch it versus trying to download a video or something, you know. So she was like, yeah. So I sent it. Needless to say, as, as an autistic person, I was shaking like a leaf. I was pacing the floors. <laughs> I was just a mess because I was like, oh my God, I've actually sent this now. It's out of my hands and, you know, it's out of my control now and it's up to them. And I knew that, you know, it was possible that they might not see it right away. They're busy people and, you know, it could be a while before I actually heard back anything. But I was trying to be patient and everything. And then um, the one that I actually sent the video to, she happened to be doing a Facebook Live. And I hopped on and I said, hello. And then she was like, Anita! And I got excited. I got so excited because she sounded happy that she saw me there in the chat. And this was after I sent the thing and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, maybe she actually watched the video. And then a couple seconds later, she's like, Anita, 
I think that you should start a cat sanctuary in Thailand. Don't y'all think she ought to start one in Thailand? Let's everybody rally together and and have you know help her to start a cat sanctuary in Thailand. My heart sank. I was devastated in that moment because that was a loud and clear message to me that they didn't want me to come there and do that. That's the message I got. And, you know, I, I was just, I was literally crushed in that moment. Um, and I kept checking and kept checking and I still keep checking. I have never gotten a formal reply back about, you know, my video message to them. That's the only response I've gotten was in a live stream being told I needed to just start one here in Thailand. <laughs> so, needless to say, um, I've been pretty damn heartbroken and very upset since that happened. Day before yesterday is basically when that happened. Um, and I've got a lot of mixed emotions and mixed feelings right now that I'm trying to sort through because I really 100% fully believed in my heart that that's where I was supposed to go. I was meant to go there and do this. I, I mean, I fully believed it. And for me, that's saying a lot because throughout my entire life, I've never trusted my decisions, never trusted any kind of decisions I make. I don't even trust my decisions on lunch. I mean, seriously. That's how much I don't ever trust in my decisions. I always doubt everything. With this, I literally had zero doubts, zero. No doubt at all. I believed 100% in my heart that this is where I was meant to be. This is what I was supposed to do. I was gonna go there. It was just gonna be a matter of sorting out details. You know, basically I was saying that I needed to have a place to stay when I got there. You know, it's like, I'm gonna be coming there with nothing. I'm gonna, it's gonna be me and a couple of cats and that's it. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm basically coming there with nothing. And I need a place to go when I get there. So I was hoping that, you know, they could find some place on their five acres of farmland, you know, with many buildings on there. And there's several buildings on there. I thought, you know, somewhere in all those buildings, there might be a little room or something that I could stay in, you know, just to give me a place to go to, even if it was just temporary. But I never got a formal response. I've not gotten any kind of message back to say, you know, wow, that is so amazing that you would want to travel 8,646 miles to come to our sanctuary and volunteer, you know. No, no reply, no nothing to say, we appreciate the offer, but we can't do that. Or, you know, if you can find a place to stay, we'd love to have you. Nothing. So I am very hurt. I am. I'm very hurt because I feel like it was extremely unfair that I wasn't given some kind of actual reply back especially because, you know, I've been following them. I mean, like you wouldn't believe, I've been following them for months and months now. I've been trying to support them in whatever way I can. I've bought merchandise twice. I've participated in that fundraiser with the Valentine Ball. I've sent them, you know, sent the, the cats some toys with handwritten letters to them to tell them how much I appreciate what they do. I promote them on this channel. I've promoted them on my ASMR channel. I promote them on my uh, cat page on Facebook. I sit and leave the Twitch stream on 24 hours a day so that that helps to generate them income. I mean, I literally try to do every single possible thing that I can to promote them. And I still want to promote them because even though I'm feeling this way, I still love their sanctuary. I still love what they do. I still love those cats. 
and I still want to promote them because I do believe in, in what they're doing. I really do. And I still feel all this love and passion in my heart for that place and still would love to go there and volunteer. But, you know, the, the issue I'm having right now is I feel like I was kind of brushed off. I don't know if they maybe didn't take me seriously or maybe they didn't like my personality. You know, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is because I wasn't given one. And that's the part that I'm really having a hard time with is, you know, feeling like I really, it took a lot of courage. It took a hell of a lot of courage to make that video and to send it. And I mean, I was shaking like a leaf when I actually sent it. Just sending the first message to say, hey, I've got a message I'm trying to get to you. I was terrified. Because <laughs> for me, that is a huge step. For anybody who might be watching this, that if you're autistic or you know somebody who is and you understand about autism, things like that, to do something like that is huge. It's not something to just be glossed over like, oh, well, that's a nice thought, but no thanks, you know, or whatever. It's a big deal. And I mean, I realize, you know, they don't know I'm autistic. They don't know any of that. They don't know anything about me, really. But, you know, in the video, I was just trying to say, look, you know, there's a lot of other details I want to discuss with you. But, you know, I want to make this short so that you don't have to sit here for half an hour, you know, basically. Um, but I don't know. Somehow it, it just, it fell flat, I guess. <laughs> and so I'm having a rough time with that. I am because it's, it's hard for me to understand how I could have been so wrong because I've always felt like I was wrong about every decision. I mean, seriously, I have always felt like every decision I've ever made was wrong in some way, you know, shape or form. It was the wrong decision. And I don't trust my decisions. But this is the first time, literally, I can, I can say this honestly, this is the first time in my entire life I was 100% sure of the decision I was making, 100%. No doubts whatsoever in the fact that I really truly believed I was meant to be there and I was going to go there and do this. Maybe it'll still happen somehow, you know. I wasn't putting all my eggs in one basket to think that, you know, oh, they were just gonna, oh, agree, sorry that they were just gonna immediately just agree to, yeah, you can come stay here, or whatever, you know. I wanted to, dis to discuss it, to talk about it, you know. That's all I was asking for was, you know, if you're interested at all, can we talk about it? Because um, they're always saying, I mean, all the time, pretty much every live stream, they talk about how desperately they need volunteers. They need cat-loving people like them that will come there and volunteer. And that's me. And I'm like offering to come there, volunteer 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I thought, you know, if they would be able to let me stay on the property, how convenient, <laughs> you know? that you would actually have someone there on site all the time that can take care of things that might need to be taken care of, that could, you know, keep an eye on things, whatever. Somebody that's there for, for many different things because I, I mentioned in my video that, you know, over the years throughout my life, I've had a bunch of like really nothing jobs you know, jobs that I was never proud of or anything, and it's like, you know, eh, I did all these cleaning jobs and all this stuff, you know, milking 500 cows and, you know, hooking them up to the machines and rounding up 500 cows out of this big, huge field to get them inside so that I could hook them up to the machines to milk them and stuff. I mean, I've had a lot of, like, you know, jobs that are like, me. Eh. But when I think about all of the skills that I've collected over those jobs through all those years, 
they're all skills that would be useful there. You know, I love to mow the lawn. If they need somebody to mow the grass, hey, that, I'm your girl. I love to do that. I love to paint. If something needed painting, I could do that. You know, stuff that goes beyond just the cats. You know, I've got other skills that would be useful. But either I didn't get my message across, really, in, in my video, or you know, maybe they don't like my personality. Maybe they don't like the person they saw there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it was important for me to make that video 100% me and to be real. And for this very reason, because I need them to see the actual person that they would be dealing with if I came there. And if my personality is not jiving with them or something, you know, need to know that before traveling halfway across the world to go there. So that could be the reason. I really don't know what it is, but I am heartbroken. I still have a part of me that wants to try to figure out another way to make this happen because I really do believe in my heart that I would I would be happy there. I really think I would. I'd be happy to be there to help. Um, so I'm not totally giving up, but I do have some ideas I've been talking with my friend Margaret about. And so we're gonna see, you know, what we can come up with. Uh, maybe I need to go somewhere else for a while and then try to make my way there. I don't know, but I'm gonna see what I can come up with because I do feel that my time here has kind of come to an end. I just feel it. I feel like it's time to go home, but I gotta get back there somehow and I gotta figure out that. <laughs> and so I'm probably gonna be putting up my, my PayPal. I don't have a cash app or anything. I just have a PayPal. You know, if anybody wants to help donate to try to help me get back home, I'd appreciate it. Because it's going to cost a lot. You know, it's going to cost a lot to get there. And I do plan on taking two of my cats. Lightning, I'm not going to be able to take. I'm going to have to see. I've already talked to somebody about the possibility of someone taking him. I don't like the thought of not taking him because I love him dearly. But he is a sick cat and they're not going to allow him to leave you know because they have to go through vet visits they have to go through these you know extensive checks and all kinds of stuff you know if you're going to try to take a cat out of thailand and they're not going to approve him <laughs> they won't so i already know that it's you know i'm going to have to get someone else to care for him but I just really do, I feel like that the time has kind of come now for me to go back home. You know, I've been, <clears throat> I've been here a long time and, you know, I haven't seen my sister since 2011. You know, I wasn't there when my mom passed away. I never got to see her again. Uh, you know, there's just, there's a lot, there's a lot that I just feel inside that I need to I need to go so you know I'm hoping that I can come up with a fundraiser and maybe get some PayPal donations or something so that hopefully I can get a little assistance to get me back because it's gonna be it's gonna be a big ordeal <laughs> to get back there it really is it's gonna be a lot to to do to deal with and to handle so anyway well thank you for watching and for listening hopefully you didn't get ill with my skating around i mean as you see i'm i skate very slow i am like very slow still at skating i'm gonna go over here and sit down <sighs> all right so that's what's going on y'all um i'll get past this 
feeling that I have right now. I mean, it's, I'm just having a hard time because I would have, I, I just would have expected a, a, an actual response to what I was offering. I mean, I would have, I mean, in my mind, I literally thought that they were going to be like their jaw dropping onto the floor going, oh my God. This person wants to travel halfway across the world to come here and volunteer full time for us. I mean, to me, that sounds amazing, <laughs> you know, and I mean, I'm sure they know if they go look on my cat page, I've had that cat page since 2013. It's, it's obvious that I am a cat lover. I mean, I'm not just some random person. I mean, I've, there's, it wouldn't be hard to find out that, you know, yeah, I, I love cats and I've been dealing with cats for years. And even here, I had kind of my own little rescue going on for a while. Um, built a catio so that the cats could go in and out from the house and out into the catio, and they, you know, out in the grass and all that stuff. You know, I did, I did that. <laughs> I mean, on a very small scale in comparison to Furball Farm, but, you know, the point is, is that, you know, I've got some experience with cats and stuff, so I think I would have been the perfect candidate. And like I said, I, I was literally, I am the perfect candidate to go and stay there and then, you know, keep their tax exempt status. So, anyway. I guess, you know, I made a meme the other day before all this happened with their a picture of their mascot. His name is Will, and he's an inspirational cat because he went through a lot. I mean, he had, his ears were so frostbitten that they, his ears are like gone practically. He's got no teeth. I mean, he's been through a lot of stuff, but he persevered and he made it, you know, and he's, He's this great, wonderful cat. So I had, took a picture of him and I made a meme that says, where there's a will, and you know, capitalizing will for his name, where there's a will, there's a way. And I made that because of this thing that I'm wanting to do. And so I'm gonna just keep reminding myself of that, that where there's a will, there's a way. And as long as the will is there, Maybe there still is a way to make it happen, but maybe it's just not going to be, you know, in the way that I thought it would be, or as soon as it would, I thought it would be, or hoped it would be. So who knows? But anyway, thank you all for watching and for listening. I do appreciate it. And um, I'll try to get back to making some videos. I know I say that a lot, and I don't always do it. It's because I do struggle. I do. I struggle a lot. Um, I have a lot of emotional stuff that I go through sometimes. Being autistic, it's, it can be hard. I'm telling you, there's times it can be hard to deal with with things. And it can be hard to, to try to make videos. And, you know, I like to try to make videos that are upbeat and happy. And sometimes I'm not feeling that way. So it's hard to make a video when you don't, when you're not feeling it. And I don't, I don't ever want to be fake. You know, it's important to me to be authentic and to be genuine and true and honest. And if I'm not feeling happy, I don't want to be a fake happy in a video because you'll know it's fake. You'll know it ain't real. You'll be able to feel that. So anyhow, thank you again. I appreciate y'all being here. I really, truly do. And, you know, no matter what I've said, I still support Furball Farm Cat Sanctuary. I think it is an amazing place. And I think the people are amazing that, that run it and take care of it. I really do. And, you know, if you are watching this and you did maybe support them in some way from my previous videos when I've talked about them, please don't feel like you made a mistake because you didn't. Those cats, they need you. They need your help. They really do. And so please continue to support them because I will. I'm going to continue to support them regardless of this because I don't know the reason that I've not gotten an actual reply back. There could be a good reason for it. I don't know. But anyway, thanks again. I know I keep saying it. <laughs> 
And I look forward to talking to you again really soon. So have a good one, everybody. And I will see you later. Bye.